What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to be talking about transport. Um, this is B3.2 HL, okay? So remember, in a separate video, I covered all of this stuff here, the hearts and the vessels, right? All of the animal transport stuff in a separate video, okay? Now, this video, we're going to cover mainly plant transport, okay? Mainly tra plant transport and a little segment on fish circ circulatory system. And then we're going to do some questions and answers, which are not only going to be about this video's content, but the whole of B3.2, okay? B3.2 HL. So make sure you uh, try those out um, to test your knowledge a bit, okay? So let's first quickly go and finish this segment on the fish circulatory system so remember in our in our in, a, in the other video we talked all about the heart and the circulatory system in animals right so we know how the basic way that it works is we have this heart and this heart is going to pump out of this artery this big artery a lot of fresh blood with a lot of oxygen and it's going to be a nice high pressure right because it's coming straight from the heart it's a lot of force that the heart gave into this vessel so a lot of high pressure blood and then it goes down into little um, smaller arteries and eventually what, what do we call this? Capillaries, right? Now, this capillaries um, is the area where this oxygen and nutrients are going to leave to the surrounding area, the cells here that need them, right? So all the oxygen is going to leave here, and this, these cells are going to use this oxygen in cell respiration to make ATP, which is the money of, this, of, the, of our body, and they may make some byproducts like carbon dioxide, right? Some waste products that they'll send into this capillary and to be taken away. So you can imagine the blood pressure here was really 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 high because it's really close to the heart but by the time we reach these tiny tiny capillaries the blood pressure is very slow and the blood is the blood flow itself is really really slow so the so even slower will be these the um, the blood when it's draining from this from these capillaries the blood pressure here will be really really low as it comes back to the heart because it's so far from the heart right so these vessels close to the heart will have high pressure and the further they get they will be low pressure so this is going to be very low pressure draining in this vein back towards the heart but now this dirty blood the heart will take it right and pump it into our lungs we call that our pulmonary circulation because pulmonary just means lungs now what do you think is going to happen to the pressure now the pressure is going to increase again right because the heart is pumping it out again with high speed so the pressure is going to be nice and high in this vessel here and again it's going to slow down and slow down until we reach the capillaries where we can have exchange happen again now this dirty blood can be cleaned cleaned up again oxygen can come from the lungs into these capillaries and the carbon dioxide can all leave right when we exhale it and when you inhale oxygen so the blood pressure is going to be really low because we're again very far from the heart now so this vein that's coming back towards the heart will have low pressure once again so you can see this is our circulation we call it a dual or a double circulation because Firstly, the heart will pump the blood to our systemic circulation, then it will come back and then it will pump it again. So it pumps it twice. There's two separate kind of circulations here, two separate pumpings that happen. One pump will bring it back here, it will come back to the heart and the heart will pump it to a different place. Dual circulation. That's very crucial to understand because in fish, it's a bit different. And I want to show you a little picture here. So in fish, if we take a fish, a fish is different because they have single circulation. Look at their little heart. Remember, our heart has four chambers, right? Because we have a double circulation, double circulation. A fish only has two little chambers, two chambers. They only have a single circulation. Look how it works. Here's a fish heart, right? And it's going to pump the blood. Look, it's going to pump it this way all the way where? It's going to pump it to the gills right the gills the gills is the place it's like the lungs of a fish okay remember the gills is you can see it on a fish and that's where this is the specialized area of a fish that is made to extract oxygen from water right humans can't do that no way we'll drown right we'll definitely if you put me underwater long enough i ain't going going survive i don't know about you but i'm not going to survive but this fish if you have a gill this thing is specialized to extract oxygen from water okay anyway so the heart pumps it it's going to be you can imagine at this point how's the pressure going to be high pressure right it's coming from the heart so it's going to slow down slow down now into this little capillary system the gills some oxygen will come in some carbon dioxide might leave now but at this point right the pressure is much slower again it's very far from the heart so we can imagine the pressure now is going to be lower again but now look whereas for the human after we pump it to our lungs, it's going to come back to the heart so we can pump it again to our body, to our upper and lower body. But that's not how it works for fish. For fish, it's going to now come straight 
to the body. It's now going to go directly here from the gills to all the parts of the fish's body instead of going back to the, to the heart to then be pumped to the body. So that I can see that's different. So it's going to go straight here from the gills with low pressure, very low pressure, all the way down to the, to the body, whatever, the whole fins, whatever, all the areas that need this, the, this blood, right? But you can imagine the pressure is low. So it's very low, very low, and then all the way back to the heart. And now the pressure will be high again. So you can see that's a very key difference, okay? This fish have a single circulation. So the limitation of this circulatory pattern that I was talking about in fish compared to animals like me and you is that um, there is a huge loss of blood pressure when the blood is within the capillaries of the gills because the blood is pumped with a lot of pressure and now the, press now the blood pressure is very low. And now it doesn't go back to the heart to gain pressure again to go to the whole body. It's going to go from the gills very slowly with very low pressure all the way to body. So you can see how it's different. The disadvantage of the system is the whole pressure idea. There's very low pressure because it doesn't go back to the heart to get that pressure again to be sent to the, to the body, the systemic circulation. Okay, so that's really it you need to know about the fish circulation. It's a single circulation compared to our system of a double or dual circulation. Okay, that's really it. So that's it for fishies. Okay, just because you, you all really wanted to know about fishies, right? Okay. Let's now go into plants. So plants are pretty, pretty interesting, to be fair. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not really passionate about plants. I don't know about you. I didn't really love the whole plant part when I did IB biology. It's like I'm, I'm really not much of a nature guy, but this is pretty interesting. And uh, hopefully I can help, help you understand it a little bit for those who are not that passionate about it like I was. But yeah, let's just, let's, just, let's just try and make the most of this, okay? So here we got our plant, beautiful glistening plant here, okay? Let's look at the parts. We got the, um, the soil here, right? The roots embedded here in the soil. The soil has got a lot of minerals, a lot of ions, a lot of water, okay? Very key. Um, and the roots, it's there, right? And, what, um, and we also have this little part coming out from this, from the roots, which holds the plant up essentially is the stem, right? And then at the end of the stem, we may have a leaf, maybe even some fruits or flowers, Okay, but this is the typical plant here. Now, why did I put dicotyledon? Well, dicotyledon, right, when we have plants, there are two big categories of plants, monocotyledon plants and dicotyledon plants. You need to know that when we talk in general about plants in the IB, it's always going to be dicotyledons. Don't worry about what that means. Just when you see this word, when you have an exam question, don't lose your mind. It's just one category of plants, okay? One huge category of plants because there's two categories, monocots and dicots, okay? Now, the confusing thing with plants is, right, we know things need to move around in this plant, okay? Things may need to go from the root to the leaves or from the leaves to the fruits and so on. Things need to transport into plants as well. But plants ain't got no damn heart. There's no heart. So how in humans, our heart is responsible for transport, for moving blood all around our body so that all the cells can get it. But a plant doesn't have this thing. So how are things moved around? How on earth? Okay. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.